Hi everyone, I hope that you're well. This summer I cycled in Wales from Cardiff to Anglesey in the north of the country and I used this opportunity to discover some very special Welsh ingredients as well as meet local producers. If you've ever been to Wales, uh, and I would definitely recommend you do because it's a beautiful country, uh, you may have noticed that there are sheep everywhere. Literally everywhere. Lamb meat is one of Wales' specialties and is well known both in the UK as well as in Europe as a very high quality meat. And when I was doing some research regarding the native breeds of Wales, I discovered one which was called Badgerface Sheep. The name comes from the marking of this animal, which are supposed to be reminiscent of badgers. Uh, it is a very old breed with a long history and it is currently endangered. Um, there are some efforts going on uh, to try to prevent it from disappearing. So that's the reason why on my way to Anglesey, I visited a former badger face farmer who lives near the city of Pofmanok in North Wales. Some of you may know the area because it's in Snowdonia or close to Snowdonia and you have a Port Meron, which is close to it. It's a, a fake Italian village. Uh, which uh, I did not visit. I tried, but it was closed. Um, so this visit was a good opportunity to hear more about his experience with what is called heritage breeds and get some insights regarding uh, the badger face sheep itself. So I'd let you enjoy the interview and uh, I will be back at the end of the, uh, the video. My name's Robin Jones. Uh, I farm here in Penmorva, which is uh, near Port Maddock in North Wales. Um, I keep uh, traditional and rare breeds. Uh, I used to keep badger face sheep, uh, but now we just have the Shropshires and uh, a more commercial flock as well. Uh, what's your history with badger face sheep? How did you end up raising them and also what made you stop? We started with badger face sheep in 19... 96 uh, I bought two ewe lambs for my uh, then girlfriend uh, it was her birthday and I bought her a couple of lambs and a pair of whaleys uh, we then uh, we got married and uh, we kept a few more and uh, the flock grew from then um, we then had children and uh, my both my daughters uh, they, they did a lot of showing with the sheep um, so we, we've shown for many years and judged for many shows. Uh, and then um, 
it was up till a couple of years ago that I lost some land uh, and I had to cut down. Plus we had the Brexit coming along the horizon as well. Uh, so we had to make a business decision. Uh, so we had to lose half our sheep in a way. Uh, so we decided to, as the, my daughters, when one was into football and the other ones into uh, horse riding and less and less into the sheep. So we decided that we'd uh, scale down the badgers and increase the, the commercial flock. Uh, so unfortunately it was a sad day for me because we've raised these sheep and created this bloodline over many, many years. And uh, it was a sad day to see them go. So can you tell us more about the badger face, like what the history of this breed and also how many heads are there left? What's the situation of the breed currently in Wales? The history of the badger face, there's, there's two types. There's the, uh, the black ones, which are the Torwan, uh, which roughly translated means uh, a, a white belly. And then you've also got the Tordi, which is the white sheep. And that's Torwan is white belly, Tordi is black belly. So it's basically a, a negative of, of the other. Their origins go back many, many years. Um, it's first recorded that they they were um, bred by the in the seventh century by the uh, the Saint Italois, and they were called originally called the Italois sheep. Uh, the, these were monks based in in the mid Wales, well South Wales, um, and they bred them for their wool and their meat. And over the years, they they bred more and more for the white instead of the black because the black bull wouldn't accept any dyes or wouldn't be coloured. Uh, and then from that came the Welsh mountain sheep, which you see in the hills around here. Uh, so they, they go really far back. Uh, there's around uh, in excess of uh, four or five thousand of the Tordis. And with the Torwens, we're, we're very, very low on Torwens. I think we're around the thousand mark of views. So the Torwens are very rare breeds now and on the at risk re register. And the Tordi is the minority breeds in a way. And so, what is specific about this breed? The characteristics. What, what, yeah, what makes it like special? Uh, the, the badgers are very special because, um, well, they're, they're a unique. They got unique markings, um, the, the black ones and the white ones. Uh, a lot of them are very popular for for showing, but uh, in in the in the national shows we have the largest number of entries in the Tordi and the Torwen categories. Um, but it's not just for showing, they're, they're easy sheep to keep and therefore a lot of small holders tend to keep them uh, and they're becoming more and more popular. But their characteristics, going back to the sheep, they're very good mothers, they're very good rearers, uh, they cross easily with other types of ram. Um, they are slow growing and slow maturing but that only adds to the taste and to the quality of the lamb in the end, and the quality of the meat is exceptional. Uh, it's a different a different taste to your normal commercial lamb. It's more sweeter. I mean, they're raised on, on herbal pastures and mountain pastures. And as I say, they do take a, lot, a bit longer to finish off than the normal sheep. Um, but they are, it does shine through in the quality of the actual product at the end of the day. And so you, you mentioned that, uh, when we were talking, you mentioned a bit earlier that uh, badger face sheep uh, were also used for like kind of like specific purposes. Can you just explain yeah. it again? So um, another reason we kept badger face sheep was uh, we, we ran um, a, a flock on a, um, on a nature reserve just down the road. Uh, and they were there specifically as conservational grazers. Uh, as tools to uh, keep the scrub down uh, and to protect the, the wildflower meadows that were there uh, and, and they do a great job. I get this feeling that the risky breeds tend to be I don't know, like kind of smarter. <laughs> the, where, where they were on the nature reserve um, you can guarantee there's a lot of people you know there's a footpath going through the nature reserve and um, you can guarantee you sit down on a Sunday night just opening a bottle of wine and the police will be on the phone saying, oh, your sheep are now in the in the village or in the town or 
they they always found found a way to get out and uh they would follow people around uh and then they would follow them through gates and uh yes they they were little characters what the challenge compared to uh commercial breeds uh when it comes like to raising this kind of sheep the challenges that i found um were as they have specific markings and in the show world uh they are judged on their on their markings uh as long as as well as the carcass and the, the quality of the ewe um but it's very hard to get spot on sheep the ones that are uh, the, the absolute correct markings and the best markings you can get one one in five possibly or you know uh every, every dozen you'd have a three three lambs out of a dozen sheep which would be adequate to show uh which means that you have to keep a lot of sheep i kept 30 to 40 sheep i was only getting you know five or six decent lambs at the end that i could show uh and the rest of those lambs even though they were pedigree they had to go somewhere else um you know to to a market and <laughs> We have some casual racism around here where they don't like colored sheep they tend to prefer the white sheep uh and the prices were reflected the, you know we had lower prices for our, our lambs and at the end of the day we're trying to run a commercial business and to make money as everyone is and we weren't making money on those lambs that we had left uh which is another reason why uh we decided that we'll get rid of those and uh, keep the more commercial type price wise we were getting 30 to 40 pounds a lamb uh and uh for the commercials now we're getting 80 90 100 pounds a lamb so the the difference is is double double the money at least on a on another commercial note if we were selling them direct to the public then we would be making uh between 70 and 100 pounds per lamb uh that's directly from the abattoir to the customers such as the restaurants and the chefs uh we have um we have sold many lambs to to local restaurants and um there's quite a few chefs but they tend to be further away in places like Manchester and London where um logistics are a problem to get them there I mean we're, we're a small farm we got a small abattoir and we have to find some way of getting a carcass or several carcasses down to london etc so it was difficult in, in that way um but more and more people are tending to turn to badger face lamb because of the difference in in the quality because of the better quality and because it's a rare mm-hmm. breed and i think now the tide is turning to buying more local uh and sustainable produce uh of which the badger is very suited Is it a breed which is getting more known outside of Wales? Uh, the breed it tends to it ten, tends to be the nucleus are in mid to south Wales um although the main breeds originated from up here um but uh it's it's fairly spread out there's a lot more in England now we've got some in uh in Scotland and uh over in Ireland as well I think um but there's there's more and more as i say small holders they they come to the sales here in wales every year and take back a few sheep and uh, i mean it's, it's it's ideal for them they they're quite a, an easy breed to to rear and uh, look after themselves in a way what what future do you see for the badger face sheep breed the future i see um is difficult as it stands with brexit as we're still not quite aware what's going to happen with brexit um but for the for the breed itself the breed's got a great future because it's it's a very commercial breed in a way as it crosses well with other sires and produces lambs of uh, many different types uh, as i say they're, they're very good rearers hopefully following the problems with covid-19 and um people moving trends to finding a more sustainable type of uh, meat and um, market hopefully they'll be looking more towards local breeders uh, local producers uh, we have a an abattoir up the road here which is um about 10 15 miles away uh, which is recently reopened 
so I can take my my food uh, my lambs up there, and I have low food miles, low carbon emissions, uh, and then that all counts in in today's market. Uh, hopefully, that uh, the future will be that people will try and source their their meat from from local producers and uh, rely less on imported meat. Do you have any advice when it comes like to trying to find like basically some butchers uh, like doing this kind of meat and like uh, uh, if so if people are interested to buy like uh, badger face meat basically how can they like um, know the quality is there in order to source um, badger face lamb I think the best best idea is to find an area where there's plenty of breeders um, there's several breeders around here and if you approach them directly then we have local abattoirs uh, and it would be cheaper for you to approach them directly rather than trying to look for a butcher uh, who specializes in rare breed lamb. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any butchers uh, these days which do specialize in rare breeds, uh, which is a shame. But uh, there's a lot of, um, lot of breeders now raising their own lambs, uh, butchering their own lambs. Um, so perhaps it's, it's possible to, um, to order direct from them. Uh, the society itself has a, a good website and a good uh, Facebook page. Um, any questions on there, you're sure to find somebody who uh, raises and butchers their own lambs and has uh, meat available. Uh, also, through the uh, Arc of Taste and uh, the Slow Food uh, movement, there are also butchers and um, suppliers on there who would supply uh, badger face meat as well. Uh, as a finishing note, can you maybe tell us more about why it is so important to fight and preserve these heritage breeds? So I think the, it's very important to um, preserve these heritage breeds, such as the badger faced. Um, once they are gone, then I mean they 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 are gone, and it's taken many many years uh, since the 70s for us to uh, build up a, a sizable flock here in the UK, uh, especially in Wales. And uh, it will be a, a great shame to, to lose such a breed. Uh, hopefully, with their commercial values uh, and their popularity in the show ring, that that will keep the breed going. Uh, as I say, that they're a fantastic breed for, for smallholders um, and for, for commercial lambs as well. Um, so it's very important to, to keep this, this breed alive. Uh, it's been my passion over the past 20, 25 years to, to really strive to keep the rare breeds and the, especially the badger faced because they're, they're such a good breed and such a characteristic breed uh, and, a, and a different breed to what you normally see in the fields around Wales. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned new things. I really wanted to thank Robin for agreeing to this interview. Hopefully this will make some of you more aware of the rare and amazing breeds of domestic animals that are under threat of extinction as well as the key role local economies have to play in the survival. If any of you is interested in badger face sheep, I'm leaving in the description down below the links to the badger face sheep society, as well as the links to Robin's website. Don't hesitate to reach out if you want to learn more, or if you want to find high quality lamb meat, I'm sure they'll be very, very happy to help. Um, if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and uh, I see you in the next one. Tschüss!